Real interest rates have been the most important impact factor for the gold price for decades. When investors could deposit funds at rates above the inflation rates, gold traditionally did not seem as attractive as during times when rates did not compensate for the loss of purchasing power. In the past months, the gold price broke out to new all-time highs. What is remarkable is that this is happening in an environment in which, according to the previous playbook, the gold price should actually have fallen as real rates have actually been rising. This divergence has become very significant during the past 18 months. Please note that the scale of the real rates on this graph is inverted in order to exhibit the correlation better, meaning a falling blue line indicates rising real rates. The collapse of the correlation between the gold price and real interest rates raises many questions. This long-time pattern is not the only one that can no longer be used to explain the gold price trend. There is considerable evidence that the old set of rules has become outdated in essential aspects, indicating that it is time to adopt the new gold playbook. Like an experienced chess player who adapts his strategies to his opponent's moves, the investment world requires a similar degree of flexibility. Investors need to be aware that the investment world is not a static terrain. Rather, it resembles the complexity of a 3D chess game. In recent years, there have been a number of structural changes that have shaped not only the gold market, but also the entire financial system in the geopolitical landscape. In our view, these transformations require the development of a new gold playbook. Before diving into the charts, we would like to express our profound gratitude to our premium partners for supporting the In Gold We Trust 2024 report. You can find more information on their services through the link in the description. The last few quarters have unequivocally validated one of our central hypotheses. The trend of gold moving increasingly to the global east is accelerating. In recent years, the central banks of the emerging countries have been the dominant marginal investors. This successive buildup of gold reserves can be seen as an indication of the growing distrust in the current U.S. dollar dominance and the associated global money and credit system. In numerous emerging markets, gold, particularly gold jewelry, holds a deep cultural and traditional significance, thereby enhancing consumer demand. As disposable income levels in emerging markets rise, the demand for gold increases, and this can propel the price of gold to a higher level. These are not merely anecdotal relationships between income and gold. The World Gold Council, in its 2023 report, India's Gold Market Reform and Growth, shows that rising income is the most powerful driver of Indian gold demand in the long term, with demand responding more to income than to price. In 2024, around 50% of global GDP will be generated by emerging markets. A quarter of a century ago, this figure was just 19%. The development of GDP per capita, which grew by an average of around 5.4% per year from 2013 to 2023, shows that this growth is not only due to the population doubling in the emerging markets. The increasing economic potential of the growing population is therefore a key driver that is likely to result in continued robust demand for gold in the coming years. There is another aspect to consider in the new gold playbook. Structurally higher inflation rates, which go hand in hand with increased inflation volatility. These will most likely accompany us in the coming years, due to fiscal nonchalance in times of higher interest rates, which creates a structurally pro-inflationary environment. In principle, the gold price reacts positively to rising inflation expectations, as was seen in 2020. The renewed pricing in of a higher inflation risk would therefore, in all likelihood, once again have a positive effect on the gold price. A new era is dawning in the investment world, accompanied by a change in the interest rate paradigm. The days of ultra-loose monetary policy and the ongoing zero-interest rate policy are a thing of the past, at least for the time being. A structurally higher interest rate level requires a reassessment of investment strategies and an adjustment of portfolios. The risks for equities and bonds have increased. We have recently witnessed the substantial vulnerability of equities and bonds in an environment of higher inflation and rising interest rates. Commodities, on the other hand, proved to be an excellent hedge in 2022, with a positive annual performance of 16.1%, while adding gold to the portfolio, would have at least significantly cushioned the losses. Even though bonds will benefit from the expected interest rate cuts, just like other asset classes, we see bonds as the big loser in the changed rules of the game. However, the paradigm shift in the bond market is not a sudden phenomenon, but rather the result of a gradual development. 
as can be seen in the historical course of the annualized real returns of 10-year U.S. bonds. However, the events of the last 24 months reinforce the conciseness and intensity of this shift, which will at least not be reversed in the new gold playbook. Anything but bonds, ABB, is the new credo. The new rules in the gold market require a rethinking of traditional asset allocation and portfolio construction. We analyze the effects of different gold allocations in an equity bond portfolio. The study period extends from 1970 to 2024 and includes monthly data on gold, as well as the total return indices of the S&P 500 and 10-year U.S. government bonds in U.S. dollars. Our calculations show that the integration of gold into an equity bond portfolio has a clearly positive impact on the Sharpe ratio. The optimum is achieved in an allocation range of 14 to 18%. An excessive increase in the gold allocation, on the other hand, leads to a decrease in the Sharpe ratio. For investors seeking to limit risk, a gold allocation in the 14 to 20% range historically was the sweet spot. These findings harmonize well with the results of previous studies, which recommend a gold allocation of 10 to 19%. However, given the current market conditions, an increased allocation of approximately 25% appears appropriate. Following the successful breakout of the gold price, now is the time for performance gold. We define performance gold as assets that have the potential to benefit disproportionately from a rising gold price, such as mining stocks or silver. In view of the many risks, we advocate an active investment strategy when dealing with gold mining stocks. This is because not only bear markets, but also bull markets are generally much more pronounced in these stocks. But what indicators are there to help you recognize the optimal time to add performance gold to your portfolio? Over the past few years, we have been working intensively on this question and have developed a signal that helps us to precisely anticipate this critical point. We are proud to present the result of our analysis, our new proprietary incrementum active arm signal. The signal has been developed to determine the optimal time to adjust gold exposure in the portfolio. It examines when it is advisable to acquire performance gold in the form of mining stocks in order to increase the gold beta. It also determines when it is appropriate to take a more defensive approach to gold exposure. This can be implemented, for example, by shifting from higher risk mining stocks, particularly in the small cap segment, to bonds issued by mining companies or royalty and streaming companies or simply by reducing exposure in order to achieve a lower beta to gold overall. However, the incrementum active arm signal is not only suitable for complex strategies, but also enables the implementation of simple investment strategies via funds or ETFs. The signal provides a clear buy or sell recommendation through three levels, offensive, neutral, and defensive. How does the performance of an active gold mining stock strategy using our incrementum active arm signal compared to a passive strategy, for example, a strategy where you are always 100% invested in gold mining stocks, the results speak for themselves. While a passive strategy has achieved a performance of around 470% since 1971, our incrementum active arm signal strategy achieved a performance of over 7,000%. The timing for a portfolio rebalancing currently appears favorable. Disinflationary tendencies are showing signs of abating, while geopolitical risks are increasing, and gold is advancing with a strong tailwind after its breakout. As performance gold, gold mining stocks could benefit disproportionately from the more positive sentiment in the gold market. The incrementum active arm signal also shows that the time may now have come for gold mining stocks. Since December 2023, it has been recommending an offensive positioning. Compared to past periods with offensive signal characteristics, we are still in an early phase. The average performance during such phases has so far been 23% over a period of 45 weeks. Currently, however, with a performance of 7% over 21 weeks, we are still well below this average, which statistically indicates further upside potential for gold mining stocks. Gold and commodities hold a significant advantage over equities and bonds because they carry no default risk a benefit that is particularly relevant in the current challenging interest rate environment. The integration of alternative asset classes therefore offers sensible diversification of the portfolio, not least due to their low correlation to equities. In addition to gold, there are other beneficiaries of the new set of rules. 
commodities which have risen from pawns to anchors of stability in the portfolio, and Bitcoin as a new piece that is establishing itself on the playing field. We are therefore convinced that these two asset classes are indispensable in a portfolio that is to be prepared for the new playbook. A well-balanced portfolio aligned with the new gold playbook comprises 60% equities and bonds and 40% alternative asset classes. Our interpretation of this updated 60-40 portfolio for long-term investors includes the following allocation. This marks a clear departure from traditional 60-40 portfolios. This positioning is not a rule set in stone, but rather a guideline that is based on current market conditions and will evolve with time and changes in the currency environment. The new playbook applies as long as we are in a period of currency instability, characterized by vast debt burdens and above average inflation volatility. In other words, until we return to an environment with a stable hard currency, be it a sovereign hard currency or a gold Bitcoin standard, a higher proportion of hard currencies seems necessary. The current scenario is reminiscent of the exciting beginnings of the previous bull market at the start of this millennium when gold broke through the symbolically momentous 1,000 US dollar mark. After a brief phase of correction during the recession following the global financial crisis in 2008, gold began a rapid advance towards the 2,000 US dollar mark. Although this target could not yet be reached in September 2011, we saw the enormous potential that was unleashed as soon as momentum picked up. Now that gold has sustainably exceeded the 2,000 US dollar mark, new targets are coming into focus. In our view, it is not unrealistic for gold to go on a run similar to that at the beginning of the 2000s decade and roughly double from its current level of around 2,400 US dollars over the next few years, which would correspond to our decade target of 4,800 US dollars, which we presented in the In Gold We Trust Report 2020, the dawning of a golden decade. For more information on the full gold report, visit www.ingoldwetrust.report. And for those interested in an investment strategy centered around hard assets, visit our independent fund and asset management company, Incrementum. Both links can be found in the video description.